Welcome one and all to Jurassic Park, a unique world of adventure unlike anything you've ever experienced before. I should explain, I'm John Havard, the owner and creator of this magnificent enterprise. Uh, by this time, I'm sure you're quite aware that Jurassic Park refers to that time in history, the Jurassic period when dinosaurs roamed the world. Here at Jurassic Park, we've created the world's largest man-made living laboratory devoted solely to the study of dinosaurs. And the park laboratories, scientists, and geneticists are at work on the process of cloning the selected dinosaurs that will live in our park. A miraculous feat of bioengineering. A central control, our nerve center for the entire site. Every creature is monitored on a continual basis. Nothing is left to chance. And in the field, our park rangers are constantly watching the area, communicating directly with central control at all times, and patrolling the site to ensure guest comfort and safety. And at the boat launching area, that's uh, where you're headed, each and every boat is in continual radio contact with the home base and central control as well. So now prepare yourselves for the adventure of a lifetime as you journey into the world of the dinosaurs on our Jurassic Park of our adventure. I guarantee you, nothing has prepared you for the adventure ahead. So from all of us to all of you, well, thanks for coming and have a wonderful day at Jurassic Park. You know, the first attraction I ever built when I came down from Scotland was the Flea Circus, Petticoat Lane. Really quite wonderful. We had uh, a wee trapeze and a, a merigo, um, gar garousel. <laughs> and a seesaw. They all move, motorised, of course, but uh, people would say they could see the fleas. Oh, I can see the fleas, Mummy, can't you see the fleas? Clown fleas and high wire fleas and fleas on parade. This place, I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. Something that was real. Something that they could see and touch. I mean, not devoid of merit. Having Nedry was a mistake, that's obvious. We're over-dependent on automation, I can see that now. Now the next time, everything's correctable. Creation is an act of sheer will. Next time, it'll be flawless.
It is absolutely imperative that we work with the Costa Rican Department of Biological Preserves to establish a set of rules for the preservation and isolation of that island. These creatures require our absence to survive, not our help. And if we could only step aside and trust in nature, life will find a way. I rode south along the coast, bus stations in the early morning, eating vending machine food in the fluorescent light. The funny thing was how easy it was. Nobody stops you. Just get on the bus and watch the highway start moving. The whole world before you. Stepping out of the bus in Mexico City, I shouldered my knapsack and felt the heat wash over me. It was good to be alone be nobody for a while. I guess it's not a vacation if you don't know when you're coming back. Oh God, this can't be happening. We hit the water like where am I? It is beautiful here. Must be one of the offshore islands. Cocos, one of the Cinco Muertes, maybe. Oh God, someone's gotta come get me. Hello? Hello? Maybe, maybe if there's a phone line or a radio. Engine, some kind of... Wait. International Genetic Technologies. That was the company from the dinosaur trial. After the trial, that old guy, John Hammond, wrote a book. He, he said it was somewhere in Central America. Oh, no. Oh, God. This is Site B. This is John Hammond's Lost World. This isn't supposed to happen. This... I graduated summa. This should be happening to a policeman or a ninja. I was a freshman when they had the first rumors. We watched it on the TV news in the common room, drinking cocoa from the kitchen. I said it would be nothing, just another cold fusion. They're probably out drinking right now. Anne? Anne who? Come on, Hammond. It's your office. Gotta be something here. Secret compartment. Ooh, ah. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. A diary. This is really old. In school, they showed me a picture of a swamp with giant lizards fighting. They said this is the way the world once was, long ago. They saw the first mornings of the world and lived through the closing of the first great age. It was 1979 and the biotech industry was just beginning to boom. Genentech and Biosyn were making hundreds of millions. I took my idea to the two Stanford geneticists, 
Norman Atherton and Henry Wu. Norman was tops in the field, a man of my generation, Henry his protege. I met with a group of Japanese investors, Emigiri and Densaika. In the end, only the Japanese have the patience for my eight-year plan. Jurassic DNA is rather thin on the ground in our times. And in 1980 there was no way to be sure it existed at all. My agents brought insect-bearing amber from the shores of the Baltic Sea, from African bazaars, from museums in Warsaw and Leningrad, even New Jersey. The tiny amber jewel held an ancient world. In early 1980, I surveyed a number of small islands in the Caribbean and Pacific. As I peered from the window of a survey plane, Isla Sauna came into view, untouched since the Spanish colonial era. Two old stone pillars with a cryptic monogram, we opted to let them stand. Who had decided to build a plantation? on this lonely island, so far out to sea. What were the circumstances of their departure? We were never to find any answers. It is a chilling thought that some day the same questions will be asked about our town, our lab, our power station. A few days after the landing, Robert and I hiked south through the jungle. Over the years, the summer rains had carved deep channels in the volcanic rock. The party took shelter in the shade, by a still pool, under a rock cliff. We had been hiking most of the day. The gorge was shadowed, even at midday. We shared the island with the crumbling remains of a vanished Mayan splinter civilization. Only an inscription read, and there they will raise the temple of the moon, and its roots shall know the depths of time. We built our main buildings inland to hide the extent of our operation. The first trees fell. Meter by meter, we pushed our way through the jungle. We began the secondary roads and walls. From our first encampment, the complex spread out in great circles or waves. In the plains to the northeast, we cultivated a different style of ecosystem. The lab I showed them in Jurassic Park was too good to be true. I had to do the dirty work elsewhere. This was to be the center of my empire. A gigantic, spidery lattice of money, science, and shadowy agreements. Requisitions for laboratory supplies, personnel uniforms, amber samples, prefabricated housing, trucks, kilometers of fencing. The Hamachi Wu gene sequences were fat boxes in dirty white casings, terribly heavy and damnably expensive. The darkness of the laboratory at night seemed like home to me. The intricate structure of the DNA, the interplay of markets and corporate holdings the pixels on a computer monitor. It is something one can become lost in. Dennis was playing a dungeon game of his own devising, running it at fantastic speed on our network. Walking corridors sketched in lines of light, stealing trushes from ancient kings. The scientists fascinated me, each working alone in the night, seeming to seek some central revelation. Acolytes of a strange, lonely, futile passion. Understand, 
We were attempting to read a code far older than humanity itself. Adenine. Cytosin. Vimine. Guanine. Uracil. We must, all of us, be conscious that we are creating the future. We will be remembered for this forever. By the end of the second year, there was a buzz, a tiny buzz in the highest of academic circles. No definite word, nothing published, but they knew something was happening. We had gone beyond Caltech, beyond Stanford or Princeton. There was no precedent, no reference point in the field. Nineteen eighty five. The first dinosaur to prove viable in the modern age was a small Albertosaur, revision three oh eight. It had behavioral quirks and a chronic skin infection, but it lived. Our preparations were exhaustive. Concrete moats, seismic sensors, twenty four hour guard, electrical fencing video monitors. Dinosaurs do not thrive in captivity. They grow vicious and stop eating, facing their cages. We had no choice but to release them into the wild. Site B was not a zoo, like Jurassic Park. It was more of a colony in a dangerous wilderness. Our buildings were outposts in another era. When the alarm sounded, workers threw down their tools and fled. Muldoon went into the field to investigate. We retreated, landing by landing. Robert stood at the third level, coolly aiming and firing. He focused on the distant raptor, sighted down the barrel with his clear, perfect eye. I fired once, Twice, thrice, the raptor threshed in the dust. At first it was only an affectation, a plaything. I hardly expected to be involved in gunplay. The fossil record shows raptors living like wolves or lions, hunting in groups. Ours did the same perhaps a genetically coded social trait. Occasionally we brought a specimen in for observation, I regret to say a sort of dinosaur rodeo would often develop. Muldoon did some ground hunting by a jeep. Even with military hardware, it was a messy enterprise. A T-Rex wins against anything except a brachiosaur or several triceratops, or a good jeep on a good road. Gallimimus, chicken mimic, fastest runner on the island, an eater of insects, eggs, and small mammals. Nineteen eighty-eight. The raptor watched me through the reinforced glass of the holding room. This was the alpha female. It seemed to know me, its partner in a nameless, endless conflict. We drove east with a heavy escort in a light rain. No one felt safe on the plains anymore. For some reason, no one has ever explained to me the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods bred a surplus of large aggressive carnivores. By 88, 
The flat land east of the town was a veritable Olympic Games of predation. Mankind is no match for the dinosaur. To be caught out alone on the plains, no one survives that. Workers smuggled in weapons for their own protection. The workmen sweated and complained in the sun. Armed guards stood round, pacing warily, and we drove the road south. The third dam, in a planned system of five, which would have regulated the flow of water throughout the island. The only one ever built. The mountain top uplink was vital to our operations. To maintain it, we blasted a road, winding clockwise up the eastern face. A clap of thunder. The ancient predators looked up to see dust rising from a dynamite explosion. The residential protective wall was a Site B institution. As it was under constant observation, it was a prized target for graffiti artists. The security officers formed their own social group, swapping war stories and discussing reaction speeds. Once the island was made known to the world, it would be a permanent settlement, perhaps even a sovereign island. Waking to the smell of the jungle, the distant call of an apatosaur. The U.S. watches its imports and exports too carefully for my purposes. We dealt mainly with China and Russia, trading on the grey market. I would often walk out on the piers when we received shipments. The mingled languages the salt of the sea air, the burnt oil smell of the industry. The sea, like glass. I left in the morning for Shouto, Montana, buoyant and slightly desperate. I would find doctors Grant and Sattler, get a statement of some sort. Economics, the bankruptcy struck Site B with more force than the hurricane. The last of the worker team came in, and we rushed to shut the gate behind them. Later that day we closed the eastern gate permanently. I retained a passcode, of course, and left it in a hidden place. David Graff and Hounds Tubke were caught at midnight by the waterfront. In the hysteria of the final days, they were nearly shot. Fortunately, the bowmen settled out of court, but the damage had been done. A mere lad from Ontario where he had enjoyed some success, controlling wildlife overpopulation in the national parks. He was out of his element on Isla Sauna. A background check on Halley Green would reveal nothing out of the ordinary. A community college education, a gun permit. Sources say Halley later attempted to penetrate the interior of the island. His plan was to reactivate the geothermal plant, then to gain access to protected data at the main lab. He thought he would be a hero, an explorer, a Lawrence of Arabia, braving danger. He did not understand what danger really is, how easily and unexpectedly death can come. Some effort was made to track Mr. Greenwood, but we never discovered what happened to him. On my last visit, the iron was beginning to rust, and part of the stairway had cracked and fallen away. So an hour later, someone will come, by a sin, or American intelligence, 
or some godforsaken trash or hunter. Our research data have become unthinkably valuable. Our computers are obsolete, and our network links are down. If they want it, they will have to come for it. But I believe it is too well hidden, and in far too dangerous a place. I picture the Americans searching our wreckage, awash with a particular feeling that comes from a ruin, the physical remnant of a lost world. I had an odd dream of a mighty wizard who lived his life alone. In Greek myth, Daedalus was a master artificer. The king of Crete commissioned from him a great labyrinth. Daedalus labored for ten years to produce this thing. It was so bewildering that one could not take a single step inside without losing one's way. Having built the maze, Daedalus himself became entrapped within it. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons. Isaiah 34.13 Never again. Hammond thought this would be here forever. Hammond's legacy. A lost world. Dear Diary, Plane has crashed on deserted island. Little chance of escape. We'll die a lonely death. Oh... Weather fine. Well, I gotta go. Anne. Um, hello? Hello? Anyone out there? I need help. This is the United States Navy Priority Channel. Identify yourself or clear the air. Ha! I mean, yes. Yes, I'm here. I'm on Site B. Right, right. We get this a lot. Listen, please clear the channel. Over. No, I'm not kidding. I'm on site B. I'm on the dinosaur preserve, for God's sake. Be advised. We're triangulating your location, and that transmitting on this frequency is a violation. Uh, sir, this, this is coming from the top of my Watson. Ha. Sorry, ma'am. Hold tight. Are you in any danger? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just get me out of here. Hold your position, ma'am. We've got people in the area. We're dispatching a helicopter to your current location. Thank you. I mean, roger that. Over and out.
a few weeks ago, a British family on a yacht cruise stumbled across the island. Site B, an in-gen research facility. For centuries, mankind has wondered about the dinosaurs, the largest land animals ever to have lived. Now, thanks to breakthrough technologies, 